one. Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> We're saying legalize it, everybody smoke pot, and it would be a much cooler, friendlier, less upset world, maybe. Uh, but in any event, uh, I entered and won for best rock track the 2009 Global Marijuana Music Awards for best rock track, which is out of Australia, but it's a worldwide thing. Global? Global, it's called the uh, GMMAs, Global Marijuana Music Awards, and subsequently got reviewed, great reviews from my album, my CD, uh, in different marijuana magazines. I did multiple interviews and got radio play on Normal, which is the national organization for marijuana legalization, which has existed since the 60s. And obviously they haven't done a good job. But, you know, come on, guys. It's time. Obama smokes pot, or smoked pot. I mean, you know, if Obama smokes cigarettes, what is he doing? I mean, well, I Clinton tell, only smoked twice, but he never I see failed, someone so. smoking a, a cigarette, and I go, what are you doing? It's killing you. Smoke a joint. You gotta smoke. Smoke a fucking joint. It'll chill you out. You're not gonna smoke 20 cigarette joints a day. I mean, you'd be dead. You know? But anyway, blah blah blah. Okay. So I've I've done that. I was very. I mean, it was like I have this Grammy esque award at home that you know says Ian Lloyd Best Rock Track GMMA's 2009. And I was like, man, I am so current. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like. 21st century, I win best hard rock track of marijuana music, you know, it's like, wow, it's like, I'm there. So, yeah, okay, uh, this coming up Christmas, which is like, we're in April of 2011, uh, in November of 2011, uh, at Thanksgiving, I will release officially to the world, even though I released it last year, but I missed the deadline to get radio play, my first Christmas single, which is called uh, Everybody's Happy Because It's Christmas Time by Ian Lloyd. You can download it now for 99 cents. It's, it's, it's out there. Uh, www.machinedreamrecords.com will take you to everything by Ian Lloyd World. Um, but I'm doing that, and my, my next project that hopefully will be out in part by the end of the year is, and, and then I'll go on, uh, is um, I, I've become friends with and pr performed a lot with in the last year and a half with a fellow by the name of John Ford of the Straubs. The Straubs were a contemporary of, so, of uh, stories. Is that Eric Carmen? Uh, that was no, the, no, that was the Strawberries. No, the Straubs were a, I'll try to be brief, they were a British rock band from the late 60s uh, that were very British folk pub kind of esque with acoustic 12 strings and stuff, but they had Mellotrons. So they kind of like fit into the late 60s Genesis Yes, Moody Blues, progressive rock thing, even though they had the, they were coming from the, the British pub folk genre and my buddy John Ford joined them after they had had like multiple album success and wrote a song called In the Part of the, U a Part of the Union which became a huge hit in Europe all over Europe because it was a union song about you can't touch me I'm a part of the union you can't touch me I'm a part you know it's like a great song and a huge hit it wasn't particularly a big hit in America but because of their success and other songs that he wrote they subsequently had a lot of album success in America, not single success. Now, Stories had the single success and not particularly the album success, which is obviously, as an artist, any artist wants, wants people, want people to, uh, you know, embrace and the buy whole, whole what they're really all about, not just one song because it was cute or was, uh, which is, you know, I'll take it any way I can get it, of course, obviously. So anyway, he and I are working together. We perform live. He Sometimes he opens acoustically for me. He's got his own full band. And then my band plays, we, as I said, stories. And um, we're working on a project. We've got two songs in the can, which we may or may not re-record, but they sound great as they are, and if they only come out that way. That's going to be my personal project for the rest of this year, which will, um, the, the following project in next year will be my next solo album following Ode to Poe. But John Ford and I, we're going to call it Ford Lloyd. And um, the first song that we recorded, which sounds it's so different and great and 
contemporary and spacey is um, If I Needed Someone by George Harrison, which... A great songwriter. A, a great songwriter. Under, he's underrated, too. Oh, he's, he's one of the underrated. Greatest, yeah, he's one of the greatest. Hole on the Hill. Something. Yeah. I mean, one of the greatest songs of all time. I mean, up there with any song, that the, one song that the Beatles would have had. Something is like a classic. The Traveling Wilburys, one of the great... God. Oh, well, we got Traveling Wilburys. There's so many people, and it's Jeff Lynne. ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, which was, if you don't, if your listeners don't know Electric Light Orchestra or um, um, Wizard, or you should check that out. It's a whole British thing that, you know, was a great, uh, and, and also cultivated. Did I take, uh, Did I take you away from what you were saying? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so anyway, the Christmas song, John Ford, Oedipo. Now, uh, we, uh, my other project, which I'm most proud of, and really have high hopes for it, just because it's so good. And I often tell them, you guys are too good. Your songs are too good. <laughs> you can't be that good. People aren't gonna get it. You know, they're, they're, people are, you know, they're kind of dumbed out today. I mean, I think we've dumbed society in general. You know, education, everything's been lowered, standards have been lowered, and which I guess, you know, it's okay. I mean, well, I love reading the newspaper with Obama is with somebody in the German chancellor and in the newspaper, even the New York Times, uh, President Obama on the left, you know, as they feel they have to tell you who's well, on to the left. Well, the German you. prime minister is a woman. Isn't I know, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't, you can't tell the guy from the girl. We have problems. We're politically killing, we're killing ourselves because we're so politically corrupt. Derek Jeter sliding at the second on your right. You know, they're explaining everything. Um, Derek Jeter is one of my heroes. Oh, yeah, he's having a tough time there. That's okay. Season. He's done so much. He's done so much more than anyone could ever do yeah. or hope to do, and I'm sure he'll do more because this is the year for the Yankees 2011. You know, I remember watching Brother Lou and listening to Brother Lou the first time and saying, oh, that's there. Ian, Ian didn't like commercial. What happened? But this is what you have to do. Well, this you know, it was just a matter of, uh, you know, things happen, and, yeah. and uh, I was told, hey, guys, you know, you need to have a hit. You gotta add a hit to this record because the, the whole second album about us was done without Brother Louie. Right. Brother Louie was an after the fact. It was added on after we had pressed whatever the initial pressing was. Um, then they said Brother Louie, and I, I mean they asked me. I picked the song. I mean I listened to a hundred songs, and and when I heard Brother Louie, I said that's a hit record. Let's you know. I mean I'm looking. I'm listening for a hit record, forgetting about. The fact that I love Yes and King Crimson and Genesis, right. <laughs> which just don't have hit records. But, you, yeah. but you're, you're a lot lighter in spirit than you were back then. I do remember a more, a more introspective. You're just having a. And is it? Let's go to your son now. Is it? A, yeah, I don't remember being introspective, but I'll trust well, you, you because you, you were come, looking from the outside. I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and you also have. Uh, your, how did your dad feel about you getting into? Talk about your dad, and then we'll move on to your son. Let's talk about generations here. How did your dad feel when you said, Dad, I want to be a rock star? What did that say? You know, I don't think I ever really said that to him. Is it? it just kind of happened. But I mean, I mean, you know, I, w I would like go to a, a session in Manhattan and Michael Brown, who he and I formed stories, his dad was a violent professional session man and my dad was a professional session violinist. And they'd be there playing strings on... Little Peggy March, I will follow him. Remember that song? A great song. Great. I mean, I talking about just great him. pop songs, just right. great song. And you know, I mean, so you know, my whole upbringing was going to sessions and seeing people recording music. I mean, I was doomed. I mean, it, yeah. it was inevitable. <laughs> Not doomed. No, I'm very happy. I, there's nothing else that I would want to do, and I'm fortunate now to be in a situation where I'm older, but I still have a lot of energy and my voice is still there and I can still perform. And now I'm bringing it, you know, continuing my own career and bringing it to my sons. Okay, and before social we move hero. on to your son, talk about the Lloyd London days. Well, that was basically my dad, you know, trying to help. I mean, as a matter of fact, that helps answer that question. He, he not only wasn't unhappy that I was wanted to be a rock star. He was trying to help me be a rock and roll or a rock and roll or whatever, rock and roll or whatever it was. Like that. He um, turned me on to, um, he, he brought me into United Artists, 
which was at that time one of the major labels, <coughs> as well as movie um, moguls, um, and introduced me to a fellow by the name of Jack Gold, who anyone who has a knowledge of uh, rock history would know is one of the uh, higher echelon A&R men at the time. This is probably, you know, you know but pre-Beatle, just pre-Beatle. Now, I don't know Jack's history, so he probably, I'm sure he was long, you know, been there for a long time doing more. But this was just before the Beatles broke. Uh, he had, he worked for a uh, United Artist. He, he had signed um, Bobby Goldsboro, and I might be wrong, but he was involved with them and getting them to the label. Bobby Goldsboro, Jay and the Americans. Um, that's, I'm not going to say any more because I'll probably, I know those two for sure because they were big UA artists and um, he had, so you know, my dad introduced me, he was like, oh great, you know, and he goes, you know, because my name was not Lloyd London or Ian Lloyd, you know, we have to find a name that's, you know, because especially back then, you know, Frankie Avalon, Fabian, you know, Fabian Forte, I mean, whatever, you know, everything was like non-Italianized or, you know, just tried to make it short and, you know, packageable. Uh, sellable. Uh, so anyway, uh, he, I, I met him, and he liked what I was doing. He said, "Look, let, we'll sign a contract. Sign you to a contract. We'll do two songs, like a single and a B-side, and um, we'll see what happens." So I did. They gave me the name Lloyd London. I mean, he said, "You know, what can we call you?" My name, first name was Lloyd, which is now my last name. You know, things are very confusing in my life. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, it's right, me too. <laughs> and and, um, and he goes. Lund Lloyd, Lloyd, Lloyd's of London. And so, you oh, know, whoa, just... duh. So it became Lloyd London. Uh, so anyway, so we recorded a song, and it was, oh, I have to say, it was, it, was a, one of the, it was a classic type of rock and roll session, pre-Beatle, pre-group, pre, you know, people bringing in their music. Garage you know, type stuff? Or? No, no, not garage, no. Beyond so garage. Classic professional studio. They pick the songs, I go, okay, I like it. I learn the songs, I go to the session. The session before I got there was the basic group that they hired, played the basic tracks. I came in, they had the strings, my dad, Harry Lukoski, or all the string players, and the singers. And they'd finish it up, and then when it's done, I'd come in and sing, let's build a world of our own, baby. A lot better now than I did then. <laughs> but, and uh, you know, and that was, that was it, you know? Uh, a couple of, notes on that. One was that their goal was, and now, you know, the Beatles are starting to break, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, my hair was like as, as short as yours is, but everybody said it was long. You know, remember that? Right. The right. Beatles had long hair, and they didn't have long hair at all. Yeah. They just didn't have the DA with it. You know, right. it was like, well, that's not long hair. It was then, but it's not as now, you know. Um, so, um, and the pompadour. So, you know, I was a big Beatle fan, and, and basically what he wanted Jack wanted me to do, and you know, which, which would make made sense in a record company. Let's make money business. They wanted me to be like Wayne Newton. So I mean, to be a you know a Beatles, Rolling Stone, British Invasion fan is happening, and everything. You know, it's really at that time it was really happening. It was just the beginning. It was like '65, maybe '64, '65. You know, so it was just right on the cusp. You know, the Supremes were, were the big band, but there were other bands coming from England that were going to break out and just... Wayne Newton? Us. Yeah. Wayne Newton. Wait, are, you, uh, are you better now than you were then? Vocally? Uh, vocally, yes. Oh, no, no. Quite. Just because, like I said, just because of, you know, working with Foreigner and Yes and all these different bands and doing all the music I've done. And, I, you know, I did a lot of uh, commercial, radio and TV commercial work in the 80s. So, I mean, that's like, you know, you go into session, they, you know, they don't want you to be there for an hour or two. You know, you got to like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour, and nail it and you give them a bunch of styles and then leave, you know. And go. You're actually traveling with two bands now, is that correct? I mean, you're, you're <laughs> yeah. splitting your time between at least two bands now, yeah. so you're pretty busy. Um, talk about that, and then you must talk yeah. about this. We'll get there. I, 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 we're running out of uh, no, space. Oh, no, no, we got plenty of time. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I definitely, uh, I'm doing that. You know, I've got multiple projects. Like I said, the John Ford thing. Uh, this is today's Tuesday, Sunday night, and this is a third thing that I do. Uh, I was out in Amityville, Long Island, 
uh, doing a brother, what I call a brother Louie appearance, where I wasn't with Social Hero, I wasn't with the Inloid Stories, I went out by myself and performed with a band assembled for this, it was a benefit for ALS, uh, a, a band assembled and they did all different things and I actually, I actually was the only guy who performed his own hit record. They, there were a lot of hits played, but nobody singing was the guy, so I was like the one which is sad when I'm the biggest being dead, you know? But anyway, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I've, I've done that. I was very, I mean, it was like, I have this Grammy-esque award at home that, you know, says Ian Lloyd, best rock track, GMMA's 2009. And I was like, man, I am so current. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like 21st century. I win best hard rock track. Good job. But, you know, come on, guys. It's time Obama smokes pot, or smoked pot. I mean, you know, if Obama smokes cigarettes, what is he doing? I mean, well, I Clinton only smoked twice, but he never I see someone so. smoking a, a cigarette, and I go, what are you doing? That's, that's killing you. Smoke a joint. You gotta smoke, smoke a fucking joint. It'll chill you out. You're not gonna smoke 20 cigarette joints a day. I mean, you're of marijuana music, you know? It's like, wow, it's like, I'm there. So, yeah, okay. Uh, this coming up Christmas, which is like, we're in April of 2011. Uh, in November of 2011, uh, at Thanksgiving, I will release officially to the world, even though I released it last year, but I missed it. One, yes, we are. We're saying legalize it, everybody smoke pot, and it would be a much cooler, friendlier, less upset world, maybe. Uh, but in any event, uh, I entered and won for Best Rock Track, the 2009 Global Marijuana Music Awards for Best Rock Track, which is out of Australia, but it's a worldwide thing. Global? Global, it's called the uh, GMMAs, Global Marijuana Music Awards, and subsequently got reviewed, great reviews from my album, my CD, uh, in like different marijuana magazines. I did multiple interviews and got radio play on Normal, which is the... National Organization for Marijuana Legalization, which has existed since the 60s. And obviously they haven't done a 